What's up everybody? My name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you missed my last video centered around the Galaxy S20 Ultra and the first 20 things that you should do as soon as you get your phone, make sure you watch that before you watch this one. I've been using the S20 Ultra for about a week now and I have to say I am really, really impressed with this phone. That said, there are 10 features that really stood out to me the most, and I think that you should try these features as soon as you get your device. So let's not waste any more time and kick it off with number one, which is all about gaming. The Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra are all equipped with 120 hertz displays, but by default, Samsung has disabled them. So let me show you how to enable it. I know I went over this in my last video. However, if you missed it, let me just walk you through it real quick. Pull down on the notification shade, go into your settings, scroll down until you see display, tap on that. And then you're gonna see the option for motion smoothness. This is going to be the refresh rate of the display. You can see by default, it's set to 60 Hertz. If you want to experience the best this display has to offer when it comes to motion and animations, you're going to enable 120 Hertz and then tap apply. As you may or may not know, the higher the refresh rate, the smoother the motion is going to appear on your display. This makes it exceptional for gaming. However, the secret to this display isn't the 120 hertz panel, since that's been talked about everywhere. It's actually the fact that the display features a 240 hertz touch sensor. This is the speed in which the display can track the movement of your fingertip. To put this in perspective, a normal phone has a 60 hertz touch sensor, which tracks the movement about every 6.6 .6 milliseconds. The iPhone 11 features a 120 hertz touch sensor, which will improve the tracking speed. However, it's still nothing compared to the S20. Thanks to the S20's 240 hertz touch sensing technology, it can reduce this latency to 4.15 milliseconds. The only other phone on the market with a 240 hertz touch sensor is the Asus ROG Phone 2. This makes the S20 an incredible experience as you have seen, and I definitely encourage you to try it out and give gaming a go. The second feature is all about manually storing your apps in the RAM. All the Galaxy S20 models feature 12 gigabytes of RAM. However, the S20 Ultra can go all the way up to 16 gigabytes. That's an insane amount of RAM. Thankfully, Samsung has come up with a clever way to take advantage of it by allowing you to manually store up to five apps in the RAM. Let me show you. One of the reasons why you might want to do this is whenever you're bouncing around between apps using the app switcher here, many times you're going to click on an app and it has to reload and that's because it has fallen out of RAM storage and it has technically closed. To prevent it, just find an app that you want to keep open, such as this game right here, tap on the app icon, and then tap on keep open for quick launching. Now that app is never going to close and it's always going to be stored in the system RAM. And you can do this with up to five apps so I can store both of these games and whenever I go back to them, it's gonna pick up right from where I left off. And if you want to remove the app from RAM storage, just tap on the lock and that's it. Next up is the ability to share a Bluetooth connection with other Galaxy devices using Music Share. Music Share allows you to share a Bluetooth connection such as a car radio or a speaker with a friend. This way they can play their music without you having to disconnect your device. Unfortunately, at the time of this video, only S20 models are supported. However, Samsung stated at the event that support will be rolling out to older Galaxy models in the near future. Let me give you a quick demo of how it works and then let me know in the comment section if you think this is awesome, because I think this is pretty sweet. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn on my Bluetooth speaker here. Hello. Now that the speaker has been turned on and it's paired with my phone, I'm going to bounce into the settings here and go under the quick toggles, locate music share, and then tap on the words music share. It's gonna pull up the settings here. Just toggle music share on. Locate the device that you wanna share down here under the available devices and then turn that on. And then on your friend's phone, have them go into their Bluetooth settings and locate the device that you're sharing. So it should pop up over here, right here. So you can see it says music share. So it's actually labeled under music share and then just tap on that Bluetooth device. A little pop-up is gonna pop up on your phone asking you whether or not you want to accept this connection, just accept it. Wait a minute for it to connect and you can see Pretty much instantaneous, it's connected. Now, if I play some music over here, you can see it's playing on the Bluetooth speaker, which is actually connected to my phone. I think this is incredible. Like this is definitely something that's going to be extremely useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the music because I'm sure you guys don't wanna listen to that anymore, but there you go. Like that's, um, 
that's Music Share in a nutshell. And I really think this thing has a lot of potential and I can't wait for this to trickle down to other devices. The Galaxy S20 Ultra supports 45 watt super fast charging. In order to take advantage of this, you will need to purchase a compatible 45 watt charger, which Samsung does not include in the box, unfortunately, and they're about 50 bucks. You'll also need to make sure that super fast charging is enabled within the settings. To do that, let me show you. First things first, let's go ahead and go into the settings here and then go under where it says device care and then tap on battery and then tap on charging. So you have three options here. You have fast charging, super fast charging, and fast wireless charging. Uh, in my previous video, I disabled super fast charging because I'm kind of still on the fence about whether or not it's going to cause damage to the longevity of my battery. But for quick little burst charges, like in a pinch, I think it's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable fast charging and then enable super fast charging. Now I'm gonna be able to get extremely fast charging speeds as long as I'm using a compatible 45 watt charger. But there is some things that you need to be aware of. I'm still on the fence about super fast charging and damage to the battery, like I previously said. However, I think it's a great feature that exists for the moments that you need it the most. I just wouldn't use it all of the time. The numbers are quite impressive with the S20 Ultra being able to charge 70% in 30 minutes, which remember, this is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It takes 59 minutes to charge to 100%, which is really great. However, what's even better is that if you don't want to spend the money on a 45 watt charger, you can still enable super fast charging with the included 25 watt charger and still go from zero to 100 in 59 minutes. The only benefit the 45 watt charger really has is in the beginning. Either way, you're still getting really fast charging speeds, which is kind of needed for this massive battery. If you're a fan of Bixby and Bixby routines, you're really gonna love number five, and that's the inclusion of Spotify, which to me is a long time in the making, and I'm really happy that it's there now. If you're not familiar with Bixby routines, I did do a dedicated video on them, so check out the card at the top. However, if you go into your quick toggles here, swipe over to uh, where it says Bixby routines, and then tap on those words, go under details. These are gonna be your presets, if you tap on one of the presets like Good Morning, you can see Spotify is baked into those presets and you can always do a custom one if you want. So if you tap on Spotify playlist and then tap on Spotify playlist again, it's gonna pull up all the presets here from Spotify. Just tap on Spotify recommended. These are all your recommended albums and songs that you get on the main page on your Spotify app. And you can just pick one of those or like I said, you can pick one of your custom playlists or one of the presets. This is really cool. I gotta say, this is definitely awesome if you're big into Bixby routines. Six is all about Samsung's own form of airdrop or wireless file sharing, which is called QuickShare. QuickShare allows you to share a photo, video, or other file wirelessly with up to five Galaxy devices at the same time. I have an S20 Ultra right here, and then I have a Note 9 right here. I'm gonna send a photo from the S20 Ultra over to my Note 9. What I'm gonna do first is go into the quick toggles and make sure that quick share is turned on, which it is, but by default it might be turned off. So just tap on it to turn it on. Now I'm gonna bounce into my gallery and locate a photo that I wanna share, which this one looks good. So now I'm gonna tap the share icon right here and then it says quick share and it's gonna give me a list of devices that I can share this photo to. So I'm gonna tap on this one because that's my Note 9. And then a notification is gonna pop up over here asking me if I want to accept the file. So I'll accept it. And it's going to download and then give me a notification once it's finished, which it is right here. And then I can tap and then open the file, which you can see that's the photo right there. Now let's go ahead and try this with two other phones at the same time because I have an additional S20 Ultra. So we're gonna send that same picture to another S20 Ultra and a Note 9 at the same time. So here we go, we have an S20 Ultra and then a Note 9. I'm going to go inside my gallery, locate a different photo this time, we'll send this one. Tap on the share button, and you're gonna see both devices pop up right here. If for some reason they don't, you might have to go into your S20, S20 Plus or S20 Ultra and then turn on Quick Share. The reason why I don't have to do that with a Note 9 is because I already have Wi-Fi Direct enabled. So now that QuickShare is turned on, you can see it has popped up right here. So now I'm going to tap on both of those devices and it should give me a notification on both. Hit accept. This one, still waiting. Now it's connecting. Hit accept. And... You can see it's receiving the file 
and there it is. So now I have that photo on both phones. See, to me, this is really, really useful. This is something that Android devices have been lacking for a while and you had to use third-party apps. To see it natively built in is awesome, but unfortunately, it's only Galaxy to Galaxy. You can't do this with non-Galaxy devices. Number seven isn't a new feature to the Galaxy lineup, but it is new to the S series and it's called Live Caption and it is really awesome. To show you how it works, I'm going to bounce into YouTube, locate one of my own videos and play it. And then to pull up the volume controls, I'm just going to hit the volume up or down and then toggle them down. And you can see an option for live caption here. Just turn it on. Now, what it's going to do is give me closed captions pretty much on anything that I'm listening to. It could be music or a video and you can see it's all written out right there. And if I bounce back to the home screen, it's right there. This is definitely a nifty feature, especially if you're trying to consume some content and you didn't bring your headphones and you don't wanna to listen to the video out loud, at least you can read the captions. It's also useful for getting lyrics to a song. There's an additional way to enable live caption. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. If you go into your quick toggles and then tap on the three little dots right here and then go to button order, you can actually bring down the live caption quick toggle so now it will live right here and then you can just toggle it on and off right there. Number eight is using the 8K video capture for photography. I'll be diving into this more in my dedicated 8K video. However, in a nutshell, you can use 8K as a continuous burst mode for photography. To give you an example, I'm going to bounce into my gallery and locate an 8K video file that I have of myself jumping like an idiot. So this is a video of me jumping like an idiot and what I'm going to do is pause the video and then scrub through it until I find a spot that I want to turn into a photo. So we'll do right there. That, that looks like a good one, right? I mean, I'm airborne. And then right here, there's going to be a little square with a picture symbol in it. Tap on that and then boom, it just took a still image, which mind you, this still image is 33 megapixels. So you're still getting plenty of detail and resolution. If I zoom in, you can see how incredibly sharp that still frame is. And this is a great way to capture motion, especially if you're filming your kids like at a t-ball game or a soccer game. And you know, you might miss the shot trying to manually hit the shutter button or even doing a burst mode. However, if you just record video and then extract still frames, you're always gonna get the perfect shot. Number nine is the new single take picture mode, which will help you get the perfect shot every time by utilizing all of the cameras and capture a mixture of different photos, videos, and GIFs with various effects. In order to demonstrate this, I brought old Freddy here. So I'm gonna put old herpy face Freddy on the table just like so. And then I'm gonna go into my camera and go under single take mode. Now I'm gonna point the camera at Freddy and then just let the camera do its thing. It's going to start capturing photos at different angles. So move the camera around a little bit. Now that it's done, let's bounce into the gallery and take a look at what it did. So we have the crown photo right here, which thinks is the best shot, which I gotta say is extremely detailed. If I pull it back up, it also did a little video here. So you can see it created a nine second video. Pull it back up. It also took a photo in black and white, which looks pretty good as well. And it took a photo from a different angle. Well, actually this is a video. Did not, oh, it's a GIF. So it created a GIF right here. Then it also did like a sepia tone filter photo. And it did pretty much like a boomerang for Instagram. And it also has the amount of shots that it took right here. So it says six. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, there you go. Finally, number 10 is to try out the new TOF sensor using the 3D scanner app, which can be downloaded from the Galaxy Store. So let me show you how to download it first. What you need to do, what you need to do first is launch the Galaxy Store. And then you're gonna do a search for the 3D camera app. So type in 3D scanner and it's right there. 
I already have it installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and launch the app now and show you some of the 3D models that I created. I did do a dedicated video about the TOF scanner on the Note 10 Plus, but it might have changed a little bit. Well, it did change a little bit with the Galaxy S20 Ultra and S20 Plus. However, I think that it needs a few firmware updates to really you know, get you a good quality 3D scan. It's still really cool that you can tinker with it and I encourage you to do so. So let's go ahead and dive into the app and I will show you some of the models that I recently created. So this is a little Dragon Ball Z character that I did. Now I actually did a scan of this same figure with the Note 10 Plus and it came out much, much better, but I'm gonna keep on tinkering with it and I'll probably do a dedicated video specifically for the 3D scanner on the S20 uh, Plus and S20 Ultra. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But that's one scan that I did. I also did a sneaker right here. Didn't come out too bad. I mean, plenty of detail as you can see. And I did the same shoe. I figured I could do it better, so I did it twice. And I also did an Xbox controller, which again, it didn't come out awful, but it didn't come out great. So that's pretty much the 3D scanner app in a nutshell. I'll do a dedicated video and show you how to actually acquire a scan and the process that you have to go through, but it's really not that tedious. Just follow the instructions on the screen. So let me hit you with the question of the day. What do you guys think of all of the features that we went over in this video? Because I'm telling you, there are a lot more to cover. The S20 Ultra is feature packed, has a ton going for it, and I cannot wait to explore more of those features and make more videos on them. If you don't want to miss those videos, make sure to click the notification bell so you can be alerted when that content drops. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will talk to you good people in the next one.